Hey everyone, we're back. Another live Q&A. This time with Darkest Laugh. Nunchuck asks, how do you feel about doubles? How do I feel about doubles? Um, I actually kind of agree with Craig on this one, that it's it's just way, way funner. If funner right, but, word. It's more fun. Um... Doubles, it's interesting. Um, I feel like I need to play it more, really. I haven't really done it a whole lot, but when I, it's it's pretty crazy. It's pretty hectic, um, like especially because of the no shields thing. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be really, really mindful of your teammate so you don't hit them. Uh, because, like, it's, in, like, Smash, it's not quite as big a deal, because you can just shield, you know, if, uh, mm -hmm. you know, one of your teammates is coming at you, but, yeah, I don't know, I don't, I haven't really, I guess I haven't really played doubles enough to, to really say too much. Um... Uh, so I'm finally on the Twitch, uh, and I see, uh, Darkest, how do you think you place out of the NA players? So out of the NA players, I'm not too crazy high. Um, I can definitely put on a good show, because um, I could name quite a few that are, that are better than me, but I would say I'm in somewhere in top 15. I don't know about necessarily top 10, but probably somewhere in top 15. <laughs> yeah, your Nightmare is pretty pretty on point. I remember facing yeah. you one time and you uh you smacked me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my Nightmare is pretty good. Um I've I've learned some you were top ten. Well, thank you, Nunchucks. I, I like to think up top ten. So, like, people that I would place above me was obviously Ozumi, uh, XYK. I don't know about Kuli. I don't know what to say about Kuli because sometimes, sometimes he does really, really well, and then other times not so much. So I don't know what to say about. Him. Um, all I wonder probably Malachi. I don't know. There's 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 a few that I can name. Um, how was your experience at Port Priority? It was a lot of fun. I really I really liked it. Uh, it was actually my first time at an actual like big tournament like that. Um, it was interesting. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. I was probably in the in brawl outside and um, brawl outside bracket. I was probably the only one who had actually played a lot. Uh, so, I mean, it sounds impressive that I had a perfect run, but given that everyone I was facing hadn't really played the game a whole lot, that's, it's not really that <laughs> impressive. Mm -hmm. Um, Atoshi, the guy that I fought in Winner's Finals and in Grands, he was actually pretty good. He actually, he had, he surprised me. I guess he had actually played the game before, just not a whole lot. Um, there was this other guy there, Riggle, who I had fought once before um, down at GameWorks. One of the times when Craig brought his PC down to GameWorks when people... So GameWorks, every Tuesday, people gather there for friendlies uh, for Smash, and that was actually how I came across Brawl Out in the first place, um, was because Craig started bringing his PC there and you know had people try his game there and that's how I came across Brawl Out and how I met Craig and why I'm here. Um, there was a guy there, Riggle, who's a Volt player and I really don't like fighting Volt. <laughs> um, no, so Faith is fun to play against but pretty much any other Volt player just, just really annoys me. Um, it's, it's not them per se, it's, it's just Volt's play style. Uh, it's just really frustrating. Uh, so, uh, like, 
I remember when we were doing friendlies long ago, I, like, I beat him, but I was like, I still really annoyed by this. Sorry, I'm going off on tangent. But anyway, so he was oh, there. Sorry. I never, I, I didn't actually get to fight him, though, because he went up against Atoshi in Winter Simmons, and Atoshi had won. So he got knocked into losers, and then I think Riggle and Atoshi met again in losers finals, and then Atoshi won again. So I never got to fight him, which I'm actually kind of happy for. Um, how do you feel about the, about Neo having a YouTube channel? I don't know who you're referring to, so I'm indifferent. Um, and then there's this other one. What is your estimate top three for the spring major finals and why? Even if there is two qualifiers. Yeah. Okay, so um, top three. I, I am anticipating Azumi to take it, to take first. Um, that's kind of obvious is why it's just he has a track record of beating everybody so um xyk also put on a really really good show um because i know in the qualifier that azumi was in um xyk actually was against him in brands and he i mean of course he lost but he still he, he still went three one which is still a lot better than many other people can say, uh, mm -hmm. especially myself. I, I don't think I've ever taken a single game off of Zumi. Um, not even close. I don't think I've even taken him to last talk. Uh, but if XYK can do that well against Azumi, and I've seen him do really, really well against many other people, um, I know in uh, Bona Cup he was in top eight. So I would, I would expect XYK to make top three. Um, Probably Malachite as well, if not XYK or Malachite. Ollie Wonder, hi. Um, hey, Ollie Wonder is definitely a, definitely a contender for top three. Um, but if if I I take four games out of Azumi and Turney, but yeah, you had to beat him at the right time. Uh, okay. I haven't, I haven't played XYK. Um, he's, he is a, a Tyson Stein player, um, so he's, like, it sounds terrible to say, but I, I see him as, like, Azumi light, because he's really, really good, he's not quite on Azumi's level, but he's, he's pretty close, uh, so he's, he's definitely a force to be reckoned with. Definitely, for my, like, you know, the tournaments I ran, I used to run, well, I mean, I think they're coming back. We're gonna make a comeback on that, but uh, <laughs> but at least, at least when I faced Ozumi, it was like one of those like, oh crap, um, you know, facing Ozumi, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, and you just you, it's just insane how well he reads you and like punishes you basically. Mhm. Mm just sets up everything so perfectly. Yeah. So something else that kind of gets me about Azumi is he, he they call him an Olaf main. Um, I guess he is sort of an Olaf main. He seems to play Olaf the most. Um, or I guess Tyson's main, because he's the OP version. Um, but he's also got a pretty darn good Volt and a good Saphir too. So it's funny because I remember watching one of Azumi's games and... Um, Craig was like, oh, he's going Volt, he's memeing. And then I'm like, but he memes so much, his Volt is actually top tier. <laughs> so, like, you can't yeah. sleep on it. Like, just because he's going Volt doesn't mean he's... Zoomies and everything, man. Yeah. Yeah, he pretty much is. He's... I don't even understand it. He's, like... Kind of reminds me of Faker, in a way. Like, if we're going to be comparing to a completely different game, mm -hmm. Faker and League of Legends, he just played literally everything. Like, he, he would... He would just take weird stuff. He would go like Riven mid, and people were like, "What are you doing?" And then he would yeah. just like kill everyone and do a bunch of crazy stuff. Yeah, Azumi, I kind of get the same vibe where he can just play whatever, and you're like, "What are you, what are you doing?" But then like he still just wrecks everyone, so you're like, "You know, what? I don't even care." Like Azumi could sandbag and still win. I just don't think I don't get it. <laughs> yeah.
Oh, uh, so something I will say about Port Priority, though, is I was a little sad that Belsnitch was not there. I don't I don't know what happened to Belsnitch, if he wasn't able to make it or what, but I was kind of hoping I'd get to see him there and hang out with him a bit. Does he live in the area where it was, or...? Um, sort of. So, Port Priority 3, it was at the University of Washington's Seattle campus. So it was in Seattle, and he is somewhere in Oregon. Ah. So he probably would have had to have come up, like, the night before and then stay at a hotel for a night and then and then be there all day and then stay in, like, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to, because it would be like, he could drive it, but it would be like a, Anywhere to like a three to five hour drive. I don't know exactly how far away he was, but. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh! How do you feel about Neil Wolf having Twitch and a YouTube channel? Um, I'm not part of Neil Wolf's, so I don't know. Um, I actually I didn't know that they had one, and I guess so. I don't really care about. I'd probably want to check it out. I would probably want to at least watch it. Yes, that would be my uh, child in the background that you're hearing, who's uh, singing to herself. It's uh, kind of just her and me that's home right now. I mean, my brother in law's here too, but he's in the other room. Kind of more music, please. What do you think about Neil Wolves as part of this community? Um, I don't. I don't really think about them because they're not really that active, I guess, as far as I can tell. So, like, I'll I'll see people randomly with the NW tag, but like, I don't really. So, like. I hear of individuals doing things that happen to carry the NW tag, but I don't ever hear of NW as a group doing something. So I've never I've never heard of like a Neil Wolf's sponsored tournament. Um, I've never heard of like I don't know like a duo group doing anything or like like a, like if there was a doubles tournament. I, I can't imagine I would I would see you know a Neo Wolves team join because I don't know they just I they exist sort of but I haven't actually seen them do anything so I don't know I don't know what to tell you. I would like to see them do more though I will say that it would be really. It would be interesting. It would be cool. Um, because I feel like if, if Neo Wolves became more active as a group and not just individuals carrying the tag and doing things, um, but uh, it would probably... It would probably... What's the word I'm looking for? Encourage other people to form their own groups and, and do more group things. How how do you feel about the drop? What? How how do you feel about the Hugua? I don't know if Hugua was a typo for drama or is is there some drama I don't know about? They might be talking about the Quilly thing that happened last night. Like the Quilly DQ. Oh, right. Um, I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, Kali, so that's that's part of the thing about Kali is because like when he can keep a level head, he does really really well. But he tends. To 
Yeah, I, I didn't. I wasn't actually following along too much. I ended up. I was actually hanging out with friends last night um, when the tournament was going on, so I kind of just caught stuff secondhand. I don't know exactly how or why, but I know I know Coley did get DQ'd. Um, I, I don't rem I don't remember who it was, but I had predicted two people that I was really expecting to to place first and second, and I was wrong on both counts. So I don't. I don't, oh, oh, right. I think I was expecting uh, Kuli and Energy to be at Grands, and Kuli ended up getting, getting DQ'd. I don't know why. Um, and Energy lost to some people that I was expecting him to beat. But I guess I, uh, I really underestimated uh, Rand. Yeah, when I saw Rand and Quilly make it, I was like, I was really happy for him. Like, that's pretty cool. And mm. Rand, like, two... So basically what happened was it was the best of five in winner's final and uh, Rayand got into Quilly's head around game three and it was like 2-0 at the time, right? And then Quilly tried to stall out the game for like 10 minutes, basically. I mean, he had to go to the bathroom, he said, and, you know, uh, I, I mean, I didn't see like the DMs, but, you know yeah, what I mean? I, but yeah, yeah. I, guess, I guess Craig... Craig said he was stalling, which I, I you know, I'm just going to be in the middle about that, I guess. I don't really know, like, you know, but I, I don't know. Yeah, but that's, that's what happened. So that was, yeah, that was, that was the call that was made. Um, so general, so like generally speaking, Craig is, he's a pretty easygoing guy. So like he, they they did have a schedule that they had to keep to, and they do have specific rules. Like if you need a break, you are allowed to, but only a certain amount of time. Um, so, like if you end up needing more for whatever reason, or if there's an emergency, something pops up, just say it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, just like as long as you're kind of open about things, then Craig can be really easy to work with, but. If he suspects that you're not being completely open and honest, then he will just try to keep things moving. That makes yeah, that makes total yeah. sense though. Yeah, I mean, so, I I do uh, agree. I just I don't want to upset Quilly by you know agreeing with the DQ, but yeah, yeah, no, I know what you mean. Like I I like Quilly. I don't I wouldn't want to upset him either. Um, but I mean it's. It's something he's gotten in trouble for in the past too, but I don't know. I feel like see that I guess that's kind of more of what I was talking about before. About Coley can do really, really well. He can do amazing. Um, like he can do things with Vandal that you just don't see anywhere else. It's insane. But he he does kind of struggle to keep his head game. So like something like that. Yeah, of just like so he was down two zero. Was it? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, like him just being down two zero, like. So what? Like, he, um, he could have made a comeback. Um, I know he's perfectly make, uh, capable of making the, the reverse 3-0 sweep. Uh, even then, like, he still could have made the loser's run. It was just winner's finals. He was still safe. He, I mean, like, mm -hmm. if he had... Yeah, because if he had stuck in it, I don't, I don't know if Slope would have been able to handle him. I mean, Slope, is, Slope definitely did a lot better than I was expecting. Um... But, I don't know. Cool. Hopefully, Coley will uh, try again soon. He did block me for a little while, though. Um, so I thought that was oh. kind of strange. He was just kind of blocking everybody. And I was like, I don't know if we have rules against blocking moderators, but then again, I don't think it really matters. Um, except that if I ever had to mute him for whatever reason. I don't think I've ever had to mute Coley before, but if I did for whatever reason, I wouldn't be able to tell him why <laughs> unless he unmuted me. Yeah. Or unblock me. Yeah. So I don't know. Um I don't think it really matters. Um Do you like or I love the community, that's honestly what keeps me around. Probably more so than the game itself. I said it. I said it. I like the game, don't get me wrong. But it's honestly the community that keeps me around more than anything else. Is I like I like talking to everyone. I like the the memes are, are fun. 
how much do you think you could place at the spring major and would you prepare in a certain way for it? Um, yes. Yeah, so I don't have super high expectations for myself, but I am definitely preparing for it. So like I've been watching people and kind of trying to figure out their play styles. Um, so like Malachite uses spot dodge like crazy. He will spam spot dodge, which is how he gets people. Is he'll just sit there and spam spot dodge while you try to run at him, and then he'll just punish you. Mm -hmm. So, he yeah. So that's something I'll try to keep in mind. Um, is because I, I I wouldn't be able to just run at him. Um, I'd have to expect him to spot dodge a lot and try to punish his spot dodge. Um, so like if I just run and dash attack at him, he'll spot dodge and then combo me for thirty percent. Um, and I don't know. Um, or just, I don't know, like, side B up till up air and kill me or something like that. Um, so I have to really be expecting to back dodge. Um, Ultra PG. I'm not actually entirely sure if I'm going to take Nightmare against him because he's he plays really, really campy. Um, and Nightmare I, is very much a rushdown. Um, and doesn't... It's not... It sucks that I really like Nightmare because in this sort of campy meta, she she does struggle a little bit just because she's a rush down. She really really likes to just run at people, or at least that's what I like to do at Nightmare. I so agree. I do. It's, uh, I do kind of the can, same thing. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about because you you play Seth, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, you know you do the same thing. Is you just want to run at people and combo them because that's it's fun and yeah. like once I can catch people. That's like 40, 50% right there. But mm -hmm. I'm probably going to take <laughs> anywhere to 50 to 90, depending on who I'm fighting. Yeah, so it's like a double edged sword, you know? It's like. Yeah, exactly. All I wonder, I think you would be really hard to prepare for because you don't have a very. You have sort of a fluid play style. So it would be. You don't really just do one thing. You, you, you're. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but it's flu I'll use that fluid. I think is actually a good word because um, you you more of adapt moment to moment. So it'd be really hard to prepare for you. Um, it would be more of just trying to outread you, which I don't know if I could do that. Um, so I mean, I guess that that would be it. It was just yeah. I'll all I want to be really hard to prepare. Should a poo be banned? I don't think so. It's... I think he should have some balance changes, but I don't think he should be banned. It, For me personally, I really don't like characters being banned in competitive play, so it, it would really, really take a lot for me to consider them being banned. Um, So I would I would go with no because Apu is really strong, but he's not like broken strong. Um, because I would put him in top tier, but there's there's definitely other characters that are really really close. Um, Tyson Stein is, is definitely up there. Um, I'd Condor's, probably say Condor. Yeah, Condor's kind of close. Um, Condor's definitely really good right now. I'm um, trying to think of what else. Um, I guess N Natura is pretty popular right now. Uh, do you have an idea of something that should be add on the game that could bring back the brawl out hype? Um, hmm. So, I know that more guest characters just will that alone will bring people in just so like if they if they added a, a, like so like when they added hyperlight drifter mm -hmm. that did bring in people who were fans of the original game it made them want to try it um because they're like oh hey i love this character i love the game but oh he's in 3d let me try this out and see what it, see how i like it um mm -hmm. people who are fans of guacamelee um they they would come in um, they would they would pick it up just for one. 
um, just because they like the game, I guess. So, the, uh, but I don't know if that would necessarily bring back hype. Um, personally, major was a really good idea, and it was well timed with their with their patches. Um, so I I'm I am excited to to see what kind of viewership the finals can bring in. Uh, yes, a big indie character like Shovel Knight. Uh, I Shovel Knight was actually just confirmed for Blade Strangers, so I know it wouldn't be specifically Shovel Knight. But yeah, something like that. Um, yeah. The situation to what Brawlout should have been. I actually have not seen enough gameplay from Blade Strangers to know much about it. I'm going to actually have to sum that up right then. I'm curious at what you mean by st stole us everything and compare this situation. Oh, do you mean, like, compare the situation of adding an indie character, or, like, adding a guest character? So, like, Blade Strangers, adding Shovel Knight and Isaac is going to bring in fans from Finding of Isaac and Shovel Knight. So have you always been playing like Sephira variants or have you uh, tried like someone else or like, you know, a different character at the start? Um, yeah, so I, my first main was actually Chief Feathers. I actually didn't play Seth, really. Um, it was when the variants came out um, that... Because, like, I liked playing Chief Feathers, but I felt like if I... Because there were just some matchups that I just struggled a lot in, so I'm like, I feel like there's probably another character that I might like more. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem is I really don't like having my recovery gimped. So, like, like, anything else, I'll find a way to work around. I just don't... That's why, like, I could never really play Vandal. Just because, like, if Vandal gets hit, then he's screwed. Or, like, if Vandal um, uses his uh, up special to grab onto the ledge and then drops down, like, he's just completely screwed. <laughs> like, he can't do anything. Um, and I hate that. Like, I can't play a character like that. Yeah. Um, so, like, I would just... So I want the most aerial mobility I can get. Um, which is kind of why I was like, I'm gonna try Night Mara because she has her flutter jump, and that would probably be very helpful in recovery and it, it actually often can be um it's an interesting thing i don't know how to describe it because because when she she does move really slowly though mm -hmm. when she's doing her flutter jump so i can actually i've learned to actually use that to my advantage sometimes of just moving so slowly through the air mm -hmm. um it can it can either like just kill time if i'm ahead or um i can use it to try and like bait people out because if they, they'll want to try and like punish me and like just be prepared for that uh, mm -hmm. how long do you think you will play brawl out oh i have no idea i i have genuinely no clue um probably a while Probably a long while, because I do really like the game. But exactly how long, I couldn't tell you. So I, I know that, that they're going to keep updating the game, at least throughout the rest of this year. Uh, so I will definitely keep playing it, like, for sure, for the rest of this year. Um, I don't know what they have planned for next year. I don't know if they have anything planned. So, like, 
I guess when I'll probably so like I can't tell you exactly how long it would take, but if they stop updating the game and then everyone else stops playing, <laughs> and so the only way I could play it would just be me beating up bots over and over. That's probably when I would just stop playing, and I, I'm, it would take mm-hmm. something really drastic for me to just drop it outright. It would probably be more like, um, uh, it would probably just be more like a gradual thing where I would just gradually stop playing it less and less, because um, that's kind of what happened to me with League of Legends. What what I played mostly before I, I got into Brawl. I still play League every now and then, but not nearly as much as I used to. Um. Same here. Um, yeah. That's kind of what I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, if, if they stop updating the game and then people just gradually stop playing it, like, you, you slowly stop playing it eventually. Um, well, you, you would slow down. I don't know if I would necessarily, like, drop it entirely. Uh, any changes you want to see in Nightmare? Yes. Uh, I know people say she isn't that good. So, primarily with her side special, it's really hard to make use of it um just because it kind of breaks to everything um and my mara can even break it herself um so now with the other people being able to break it that's something i can sometimes use to my advantage uh not too often um because like i can i'll throw it out up in the air right and someone might want to not have that zone there and so they'll just throw out an aerial or something at it yeah um but then i can just hit them in the end lag um so i can i can sometimes put people in a position where they either have to hit they either have to destroy the bats or you know (laughs) um not and just try to avoid it or something like they or they get like they can choose to treat it like you would treat Naturas or Saphiras, um, but because there's also that option of being able to just destroy it, that's something they have to consider. That they, they are throwing out an attack on something that does not add any percent on me mm-hmm. or anything, and depending on how they choose to attack it, uh, can actually leave them vulnerable. Um, I... I feel like there's because of that, there should be because it is destroyable though, there should be some sort of like extra reward on the other hand for if you do land it. Um maybe like a like, poison would be kinda cool. Like if, Oh like yeah, like poisonous bats. So like if you got hit by it you you would take the initial So that's something I was thinking about too, is like if there was like they added more damage to it, because right now it's just objectively worse. Then, so it's not like, say, like, I'm trying to think. So it's not like, say, like, Senator Feathers and Condor, they're neutral special. Mm-hmm. It's where they're, there's not like some, like, they're, they're different, but there's, you can't necessarily say one is objectively better than the other in all situations. Um, it's just different. Um, it's it's not like that. It's more it's more like between um, Chief Feathers neutral special and Senator Feathers neutral special. Where I mean, so like if you compare them side by side, um, Chief Feathers side special or not side special is neutral special actually does a little bit more damage and has a little bit more knockback. But just because the arc is just not nearly as good. Not only that, but it's weakened in the air when uh, Senators is not. So it's just in just about every case, Chief Feathers is just objectively worse. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, it's, it feels kind of like that, where it's just it's just worse. Like, it's there's no sort of trade-off. It's not like it breaks easier, but it does more damage or anything like that. Or yeah. it has, or it's not... So, like, if they, honestly, more than... Adding more so than, like, more damage, if they could give it, like, a more predictable arc for the knockback, I would love that way more. Because right now you can DI with it. Um, so I like to try and fish for an up air. I mean, it's safe to do. So like if I if I do land my side special, I'm going to try and fish for an up air 
because depending on what percent you're at, that can kill. Or something I'll I'll do a lot um, is I'll throw if you're when you're trying to recover, I'll throw out side special in hopes that you'll hit it and just fly towards me, and I'll start charging my up smash, uh, up smash, up mm-hmm. charged up whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So I'll so either two things will happen. Um, either a I catch you going when I'm on the way up, and it'll shoot you straight up in the air, depending on what percent you're at. That can kill. Or even better is I'll catch you on the way down, which hits even harder, but will spike. And yeah. so I, I've gotten some cheeky kills with that, with side special into the second part of charged up smash, <laughs> um, spiking people. So like it's not I want I don't want to say it's completely useless like some people say, but I just feel like there should be. It's just objectively worse than the others, and so like really the only thing Nightmara has going for her is the flutter jump. Which is literally the only reason I play her. Yeah. Otherwise, like if you don't care so much for the flutter jump, just play Safira. She's objectively better in every other way. Mm-hmm. She just doesn't have the flutter jump. That's it. Um. So. Uh, let's see. Oh, do you think you can become a Mario Tennis Aces top player with Waluigi? <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm definitely going to buy the game. I'm definitely going to play Waluigi um, because I like Waluigi. And trivia fact, Waluigi was not created by Nintendo. He was created by the third-party company that um, helped make the original uh, Mario Tennis game. So Hmm. it's, yeah... Um, that's probably why Waluigi never has and probably never will get his own game, just because he wasn't actually created by Nintendo. So it was, I forget the name of the company that was helping them make the original Mario Tennis, um, but he they cre- they felt like Wario needed a counterpart to match like what Luigi was to Mario. Like Wario had nothing, mm-hmm. so like in if in, in doubles it would just be weird having like Mario, Luigi, and then Wario and not, like nothing to match that, so yeah. that's why they created Waluigi, um, and just like how Wario is is has a, like the same features as Mario, but exaggerated, you know, like he's even shorter than Mario and even more plumper than Mario. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they want Waluigi to be similar to that, but to Lu- Luigi, so he's an exaggerated version of Luigi. He's even taller. Even um, I don't know if I'd be able to become a top player. Um, because obviously I haven't had a chance to play the game yet, so I don't know how good Waluigi is. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna play him regardless. But I, I don't know because if Waluigi ends up being just garbage, then I'm just gonna get tier listed out of the way. Um, so I don't know if I really be able to be top player. Um, even then, I haven't actually played Mario Tennis a crazy a lot. There's probably definitely gonna be people better than me. Um, name some toxic people in the community. I'd rather not. Just because I don't, so like, I don't necessarily believe any person in the the community is inherently a toxic person. Now, they're definitely, like, I'm not going to deny there has been people who have exhibited toxic behavior, but I don't think that, but I don't think that necessarily makes them as a whole a toxic person. If that makes sense. That because makes sense. Those, same, those same people often other times have shown the exact opposite. So if doing something toxic makes you a toxic person, then doing something good would make you a not toxic person. So like I don't, I don't know where where the line is as to where exactly someone becomes that person. So, mm-hmm. so while the weekend is finished, I would lose it if they actually put Waluigi as a playable character in Smash. <laughs> um, I would love that. I really would. I think there's a lot of. Uh, interesting things they could do with Waluigi and Smidge, but they probably won't do it. For, as I, like, the reason I mentioned earlier is just because they were actually created by Nintendo. But, 
right? Yeah, he's been an assist trophy two times, so there's that. You know, we, he's uh, part of an item that's not allowed in competitive play. So, yeah, that's something. Which kind of, you know, oof. It's that's a little oof right there, you know? Yeah, right? So it's like just um, he'll show up if you're, you know, doing any of the single-player modes because they keep all the items in the single-player modes. Um, or if you're just playing with friends and decide to keep on assist trophies, then mm-hmm. you might see him. But uh, other than that, he's just... They missed an opportunity. Like, come on, there's the hype for it. There's the demand, you know? Right, no, they're, like, there's... I honestly feel like they really should make a, a game for Waluigi and add him into Smash. Um, I feel like th- that would actually go over very well. So, like, Wario's had his own games. Obviously, there was the WarioWare series, and then he, um... Way, way back on GameCube, before... Well, I don't know, actually, if it was completely before the Warrior Wear series. It might have been. I'm pretty sure it is, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but he had that, um, I can't even think of the name of it now. Um, like, Warrior World or something like that, but it was on the GameCube. Um, I actually never got to play it. Oh, my goodness. I actually completely forgot about that game until now. Um, but, yeah, war, um, I remember it now, but it was on the GameCube. Um... I actually haven't played a whole lot of warrior games, so I don't. I don't necessarily. I can't say I have a favorite warrior game because I, I never played any of the warrior, warrior wear ink. Um, so I, I'm guessing if I played that warrior world game uh, on the, from the GameCube, because I know the game is basically just you play as Wario and you're trying to get his money back. Mm-hmm. He's just out for gold. Um, and oh, so, that game. Now, yeah, I remember yes. now. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure if I actually played that, that one would probably be my favorite. Uh, but I haven't really played it. And I never played it in the Warrior War, Warrior War Command on DS. Yeah, I, I don't know why Warrior War just never really caught my attention. I mean, the idea was kind of good, but it's just the games aren't, they aren't really, like, in-depth enough, you know what I mean? And there's so many that it's like, you know, uh, I mean, I don't know. So it's it's definitely unique. Um, it's not necessarily for everyone, but um, like the people who would enjoy that kind of thing, that would be the game to get. So like, if you enjoy just short mini games, then you you would want WarioWare because your only other option is like Mario Party, I guess. Yeah. Um, Probably, yeah. I'd say, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, like, it's... it's, But still, Mario Party never really had, like, the best single player. So I feel like Warrior Wear is much better tuned for, like, a just a, a single player experience than Mario Party is. Mario Party is more... Because they throw in so much RNG in it, it's, it's, it's more of a game that you play with your friends to try and destroy your friendship. <laughs> so... Totally. <laughs> I destroy my brother sometimes in uh, in Mario Party, which is uh, that's a good time. I actually so this is kind of off topic, but I remember the first game I ever made someone rage quit on was NBA Street Volume Two. I had that game on the GameCube and I was playing it with my sister when we were little kids. And so I, what I kept, I did this over and over and over to the point. So we were actually playing on the same team, and she would get the ball, and she would go to make a shot, and then I would jump up and grab the ball out of the air, <laughs> stopping her from making the shot, and then pass it back to her. And I did that over and over and over. And she was like, stop it. So she was, like, it got to the point, she was like, She's like, I don't even care, like, if you just grab it and slam it, dunk, or just something. But, like, stop yeah. grabbing it and then passing it back to me. <laughs> and so, like, if she tried to pass it back to me, I would just pass it right back to her. I would not do anything else other than just grab the ball out of the air every time she tried to make a shot and just throw it back to her. <laughs> and it got to the point where 
where she just she just walked away. She was done with it. <laughs> that sounds like my brother sometimes in Smash. He just, you know, or oh, did I did I tell you I played my brother in Brawl Out, and yeah. we had a best of nine, or no, I think it was best of nine, right? Yeah, and. <laughs> So he's been playing Smash 4 for a while, and I've been trying to get him to, like, play, you know, Brawl. We finally have the time to do it, right, on PC. And he, I first tried to explain him, like, the mechanics of the game, and like an older brother is most of the time, like a big ego, you know what I mean? He goes, he goes, like, you know, I'm just gonna win. So, <laughs> I three-stock him for, like, three games in a row, right? And I'm I'm streaming at the same time, so I'm trying to update OBS with like the scores. So I like pause, you know, and like change the scores so he sees his his defeat right there, right? And mm. normally he beats me in Smash Bros. like all the time. So it's just it's good to have like <laughs> a game that I beat him all the time in. That's probably why he was afraid to play me in this, to be honest. And that's what he told me after uh after I seven and owed him, he didn't get a single game <laughs> off of me. Oh gosh, it was a uh, it was a time. I was laughing so hard. Maybe he should play more, get some practice. Yeah, I'm gonna Maybe. definitely try to encourage him to play it more. He mm -hmm. said he would when it comes out on Xbox because that's what he has at his uh, at his college. So. Oh. Uh, to answer your question real quick, uh, uh, yes, actually, I would totally be down, because I'm, I'm probably going to play that a lot, too. I'm actually really excited for it. Um, I like what they did um, with the with that mechanic that they added, but then they also created a, a... So, like, you can turn... So, like, I don't remember exactly the details on how the mechanic worked, um, but they created, like, this sort of, like, a mirror mechanic where you get, like... Um, you, you can either use it offensively or defensively. So, like, if you use it offensively, you can, like, aim, like, just go into, you can aim your shot and shoot it literally wherever. Um, but if you can also use it defensively to slow down time, and so you move super fast. And so, but then uh, for people who wouldn't really care for that mechanic, they also have an option, like, a, a, an option where you can turn that off and just as you would like original without any sort of like special fancy mechanics or anything. Tennis. So I, I like it. Um, either way, um, I would probably enjoy both, both, both styles, honestly, but yeah, I'm going to play it a lot and yeah, I would be happy to be your partner. I was going to say something else and I totally forgot what were we talking about before. Oh, we were talking about, uh, Wario games Warrior games um no I don't it? there was something more broad oh well whatever um I guess just move. oh no you didn't hear the answer because it's true okay so um uh short answer is yes I would enjoy being your doubles partner that would be fun I would be happy Catch it that time. Let's see. I don't know, Bubby. Do you have any questions for me? Do you get really nervous when you're in a tournament? And how would you get over that nervousness if you do? Oh, yes. So, yeah. Um, so, funny thing is at Fort Purdy, so, like, the first person that I fought, I was actually, so, like, I was actually kind of shaking, and I was playing so ridiculously bad. So, like, this guy had literally never played before, and he got the first stock. 
And I was like, why am I doing so bad? But I was like, I don't know why I'm so nervous. But like the more I was there and the more I played, um, I just got kind of more comfortable being there. Mm-hmm. Now, I've been in a few online tournaments, and those those aren't nearly as bad as far as, like, the nervousness factor goes, um, just because I'm at home in my room. Yeah. So there's that. I'm not really, like, around people. I mean, there was, like, a little bit of it at first, but it was... I entered enough that of like ones that didn't really have prizes or anything so it felt more just like organized friendlies I guess yeah uh, so I um, after doing that a few times it, it wasn't really so bad but in person events now that's gonna be I, I don't actually so like I've done one and so like I think what I should do is when I do an in-person event to do a lot of friendlies first just to kind of get my hands warm, I guess, and just kind of get more comfortable with being where I'm at. Yeah. Oh, how did you hear about the game? Uh, He didn't ask about it, but I went on a tangent and kind of talked about it. So, um, Last year, I had, like, decided to be fully done with League. Because um, I, I played League of Legends all the time, and I was I needed to be done with it. Um, so I just I stopped playing it completely for a few months. Um, and, but I, and I quit watching, like, Pro League play as well. Um, but I still, because I really enjoyed watching Pro League play, and so I'm like, I need an eSports fix. And so the first thing I jumped to was Smash Bros because I was already sort of familiar with it. So I didn't have to like, it wasn't like if I tried going into Dota 2, I'd have to completely relearn or like learn everything just from the ground up. But like Smash Bros is lit a bit more simpler from a spectator's view. Um, so it's, it's a lot easier to follow along. So I didn't have to like learn a bunch of stuff. I still mm-hmm. like, I did learn things eventually, but I didn't have to know a bun- like, I didn't have to do a whole bunch of reading in order to be able to enjoy watching it. I could just pull it up and just watch. Mm-hmm. Um, I think just, you know, know enough of what's going on. So I did actually want to get into competitive Smash because um, there is actually a fairly active Smash 4 scene in Seattle. Uh, and there's a, an arcade, Gameworks, in Seattle. And people gather there every Tuesday for Smash 4 friendlies. Well, they, they play other fighting games there, too. Um, it's just... It's just it's one of those... Because it's an arcade on a Tuesday, so there's not anything really big going on. Mm-hmm. So they'll try and entice people in with, oh, hey, just practice your fighting games. Um, because then people are more likely... Because once they're already there, they're more likely to buy food, buy drinks, um, you know, play on the arcade machines so that way they they might not necessarily make a whole lot of money off of it but they're more likely to get something other than if they had nothing going on that on tuesdays and it would just be completely dead yeah so that's kind of the idea now like obviously they wouldn't want to do that on like a saturday where people are going there just to enjoy being there but like on tuesday Mm -hmm. otherwise it would be completely dead um so i started going to that and i actually met craig there so um craig was showed up one day, one Tuesday, um, and he brought his computer and he had set it up and he was trying to get the local Smash community to try Brawl out. Um, That was back in August of last year. Um, So he, and he was trying, and I tried it and I was like, I actually think I like this more than Smash. Expected you to meet Craig when you said the word word game works. Yep, that's that's how I came across the game. Was uh, Craig advertised it to me because um, he was like, "Hey, play it." Um, so that's when I first tried it. Um, I then immediately went home and bought it that night, and then I uh, uh, 
because I think he had mentioned the Discord, and I'm like, oh, they have a Discord. I, I, I didn't really use Discord a whole lot. Um, I used it. I already had it downloaded because I would use it sometimes when I was playing League with my friends. It was just kind of easier um, than trying to, like, organize Skype calls. Mm -hmm. uh, not only that, but Discord is just more secure than Skype is. Uh, so, I, I mean, I also really like Curse Voice. Curse Voice was actually a pretty good program. Um, but Discord is just... It's easier for organizing, like, group activities. Um, so, especially, like... And then PC Brawlout was almost dead, I guess. Yeah, so back back then, that was before... August of last year. It was before any of the variants, before WAN, um, before all of the alternate stages. Um, the mechanics were a lot different back then. And yeah, there wasn't real. It wasn't nearly as big as it is now. But then again, it was. It was a platform fighter on PC that was in beta. Yeah. So I wasn't expecting something really big. Um, I think it's something I can't help but find kind of funny is there's still this. This uh, idea, I guess, that the, the the PC players are all better than Switch players, which they're not. Not necessarily. I think if you were to count out the top ten, there would be more Switch players than PC players. Yeah. Um. Just like. So like. All I wonder, Malachi, they they didn't come until the Switch version. Assuming, obviously, he's been playing for, for a long time, so I guess he would be kind of on the PC side. But um, Rayan did really well. He he didn't start playing until the Switch version, um, I don't think. I don't remember seeing him before the Switch came out. Uh, Coley, I know... Um, didn't start playing until the Switch version. I don't think XYK... Uh, played it on PC. I think he started after the Switch version came out. Yeah, because I think he only played Tyson Stein, if I'm not mistaken. So, I'm pretty sure, yeah, he did it during Switch. So, uh, I think I'm godlike on PC, because it just feels right to me. I know what you mean. For some reason, so, like, even though... So, like, at Port Priority 3, we had a Switch setup. We had my Switch setup, and then we had um, a PC setup. And I have, like, even getting to play them side by side, they are identical. But for some reason, when I'm at home, I feel like I do just way, way better when I play on PC. Oh, he did. Okay, yeah, because if he, if he played uh, Super Smash Bros. 2017, then he definitely did play it on PC. That was, that was before the, the Switch version. That was before 1.0. I don't know. I never actually watched <laughs> SSC 2017. Um, I should have. Do you think they're going to bring it back this year? Oh, uh, Brawl Out to Super Smash Bros? Yeah. Um... I was thinking about going, because that, that sounds pretty cool. I would love to go. If they did, I, I, would, I would find a way to go one way or another. Um, but if they will, um, probably. I don't want to say like I'm 100% sure they will, but probably. Um, just because, I mean, it was clearly a big success last year. So, how many people signed up for it? Um, I don't actually know offhand, but I know there was quite a bit. Oh, actually, come to think of it, now that you mentioned Saltus, I actually did 
watch a little bit of it. I remember Zaltus. I think that was top three, wasn't it? It was Zaltus took third, and then Mega ML was second, and Azumi was first. Mm-hmm. You know what I just realized? <laughs> so Azumi, he has a he. One of his roles is Super Smash Con 2017 champion. Mm-hmm. Why didn't I don't know if Ollie Wonder got a 2018 Switch Fest champ tag, but he should. And then I feel like I should have a Port Priority 3. Or, like, um... Actually, yeah, because it, it could just be, like, PP3 champ. Or third port champ. Yeah. It, 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 it would be kind of, like, redundant to say Port Priority 3 2018 champ, because the, the way Port Priority goes is the first one was just port priority and uh, I think it was port priority one and then they number them this so they're not based on the year so like because hmm. like you can't that's why you can't really just say like super smash con champion because it's like which year yeah yeah I don't I don't care if it was free I still want my time <laughs> okay actually because as a moderator I can create roles so there's nothing really stopping me from just making a role that doesn't do anything but just says pp three champ and giving it to myself i mean it would make sense though like the like both of the roles that you're talking about because you know those are pretty you know they're pretty big events too like, they're, yeah they're yeah. they're still significant <laughs> um i wonder if they're gonna make a role for the spring major champ All oh, Brawlout Majors should have a title. I suggested I... Brawlout Bowl, but I don't know. That that's probably sounds uh, pretty bad Brawl when I say it. Brawlout Bowl. Yeah, so like, when is it, we're never going to have like the, the Super Bowl version for Brawlout. Like, Brawlout's version of the Super Bowl. Like, when's that guy? Maybe that is the Spring Major. That is the Spring Major. <laughs> it's Brawlout's version of the Super Bowl. I'm actually really hyped for it. So, not so like I, I already have the day off. I switched shifts with someone for that day, so I I'm, I can make it to the finals. Um, part of me doesn't actually want to go all that super far. Like I definitely want to go far because money, but uh, yeah. on the other hand, I want to watch it. <laughs> like. <laughs> Uh, sadly enough, I want to watch it more than I actually want to play it. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I don't, like, I don't want to throw. I wouldn't do that. But, yeah. like, part of me is kind of hoping that I only go, like, 2-2 two, two or something like that. I see what you mean, though. Yeah. Yeah. Even if I win, like, 7 turnies, I only like one version of the beach. Yeah, because, I mean, you wouldn't want to create... Because if we created titles for, like, smaller things, like the weeklies, bi-weeklies, um, or the monthlies, or whatever, um, you, there would just get too many of them, and it would get out of hand. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's... But for major ones, I feel like that would be quite so tragic if we created rules for them. Because, like, it wouldn't do anything. Like, it's not like it's risky to really make it. A... So, because, like, when you're making a role, you just got to make sure that you don't check any boxes that you shouldn't. Because, like, when you create a role, it, there's, like, a bunch of boxes to different permissions that you have. And so if you check the wrong box, you can inadvertently do anything as drastically from giving someone moderator powers accidentally to muting them oh, fully. Crap. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you could you can do either of those or anything in between. Like anything you can think of like when you create a role it just but when you like first pull it up, it by default has everything checked um that matches the 
no roll, or like everyone roll, I guess is what it's called. Because hmm. technically everyone has a roll that says everyone, and so that's why when you ping at everyone, you're pinging the roll everyone, which everyone has. That makes Weird sense. Weird how it works. Yeah. Yeah. It's... All right. Uh, don't you think we should try to bring all top players we could have on the PC scene and then do international tournaments like before? Yes. So be even though the PC scene is kind of small, if we made because just the, I mean not not the net coding on the Switch is bad. It's just the net coding on the PC is just inherently better. So you can actually do international tourneys. So actually, that would probably be a good idea. So we could start running some PC tourneys and just make it international. That's, you know what, I should probably be doing that. That's actually a good idea. I could probably start, I don't know if I would want to wait until after the spring major, but because I wouldn't want people to get burned out, but um, I'd probably do it on like Thursdays or Fridays, um, but I could probably set up like an international term. It would be hard finding a time for it though, which is the problem. Yeah with those time zones because i think emil is six hours ahead of eastern standard time so east coast people yeah so like if it was because i'm on the west coast so if it was noon my time that would make it 9 p.m his time or their time i don't actually know if emil's very well all i mean i struggle enough with trying to find a good time for the time zones in america alone just the three hour difference? Um, Cause I'm like, 5 p.m. would work great for me. But you know what doesn't? <laughs> 8 p.m. does not work good for people on the East Coast. Yeah. Especially people like Ozumi, for example, you know, who have like school in the morning and stuff and people who work in the morning and they don't want it because if it starts at 8 p.m. their time, um, it could go on until like midnight, but they have to be up at 6 a.m. And so I, I, I don't want to do that to people. Yeah, it's it's kind of difficult when I when I would like organize them. It's like you said, it's really kind of difficult for to do even coastal, like by coastal. So yeah, but yeah. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure I'll like figure out a good time though. So would you be hyped for the weekly tourney I used to run to come back? I, I would be hyped for that, actually. Sorry, I got distracted by uh, reading the comment. That that would actually be good. Um, so, because I feel like it was after Bonica, a lot of the weeklies and bi weeklies, I guess they just all died. I don't know. In, so, in my case, it was because right at that time, it was like right after that, my schedule, my work schedule had changed. And so, I couldn't run it on Sundays like I had done before. And I tried once doing it on a Thursday, but it was literally just, like, only one person showed up. And so I, I entered my own tournament, beat him, and then gave him the prize anyways because I didn't want to just – I'm like – he was like, well, you won. You can keep it. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm the one who got it. Yeah. And I just feel weird about winning my own money. It's just not the same. And he was like, okay, that's fair. So he's like, well, I mean, since you're offering, I'll take it. And I'm like, that's the way to be. Yeah. Um, I was here. I just don't know if I talked to you about it, but I plan on doing a brawlout league that will feature all 16 brawlouts, three major final players, plus maybe four invites that would be given players on tourneys. Maybe. Um, no, actually, I so I think I've heard about that, but I hadn't. I like I had heard that there was good like someone wanted to organize another thing that would include the spring major final players but i didn't know much about it or even when so i don't i'm i don't know like what your plans are for that so like i don't know if like did you have like a price pool set or like a price of any kind or
that that might be kind of hard to organize because the the reason why the um, I mean, like, I'm not trying to dug on your idea because uh, I, I like it. Um, I'm all for more things, um, but it's just the reason why they were they were able to to organize for the big invitational is because there's cash prizes. Um, so it's since it's like people actually show up and they're not just kind of going to show up just to play. They're actually working towards something. Uh, I, I've noticed that like back when people were making tournaments like virtually every day, Azumi never entered them unless there was a prize. And it's like I can't really blame them. Um, just because it's like if, if there's no real prize. And so like uh I'm most used to helping the TO, even if it's like the, the you know, my tech jumps I never ask for anything to take place. Um, so I definitely like the idea of getting the skin codes out. Um, but it might be a struggle just to get that many people organized together just for skin codes. Um, I would recommend setting up like a GoFundMe, perhaps, to try and actually get some money together uh, for an actual prize. Well, not like an actual prize. I don't want to say like actual prize. The skin codes are definitely an actual prize. I like the skin codes. Um, but yeah, something something like a bigger prize, I guess. You get like a big prize. So like you could, um, I'm sure you like you could definitely talk to Craig, and he would definitely set you up with some skin codes for for people for like top four but maybe also like get a GoFundMe to try and try and uh, get people to donate try and set up because I, I don't remember who it was but I remember there was someone who was talking about wanting to set up like a paid tourney an online paid tourney but because online paid tourneys they're not necessarily legal everywhere in the US nobody does them just because if someone lives in an area where it's not legal, then you can get in trouble, right? even if it's legal in your area. So, hmm. it's not worth it. it. So, like, I didn't if know you, that that was a thing. Huh. Yeah, that is, yeah, that's why that's why no one ever does online paid turns. If if it was legal everywhere in the U.S., you would probably see them all the time, just because you. I mean. If you, you could have, like, a $5 entry fee, right? It's one thing, like, if you actually have, like, a venue set, like, a venue set, and people have to five, pay 5 bucks to get in, you also have to consider their, like, travel costs and everything, so they're actually end up investing a lot into it. But if you had a paid tourney online, people would just sit at home. They don't have to pay for gas or cab fare or bus fare or whatever. And they can just kind of wake up, and there they are. They're ready to go. Yeah. And not some countries, some parts of the U.S. I cannot tell you exactly where. I don't know that off the top of my head, but I know that they are legal in some, I think, some states. It might be some cities. I don't actually know. But it's legal in some parts of the U.S. Um, and, yeah, um, <laughs> this is something that I've, I've had multiple conversations about in the past. And that's, so, like, it's not necessarily, I think it has to do with online gambling laws. Um so it's not inherent so like because when i was doing like the the eShop gift card thing mm -hmm. for um because it was free to enter it didn't matter what i give people to win or that's just a gift i mean unless it was like some absurdly high amount that would seem kind of fishy um yeah, yeah but like ten dollar gift card no that's that's really fine because they didn't pay anything to get it um but yeah online paid attorneys not not a good idea so, like, if you were in an area where it was legal and you guaranteed that all of the people that were entering were in, lived in that area, then you'd probably be fine. But you, it's a matter of making sure you know your local laws and making sure you know where everyone is. That's why just trying to organize that online just doesn't work. It's too much hassle. People don't do it. Um, and even then, someone could lie to you and say, oh, yeah, I live someplace that I don't, and then you can get in trouble for that. If they enter. So, mm -hmm. you don't do it. 
Um, that's why it's probably better to just do like a GoFundMe or something like that. So where or like try and get uh, stream it and then have people do Twitch donations. Well, I never do financing. Yeah, it, it would be tough. It's just like I said. So like, I will say like in my case. So like the the grant the finals. That's like it's a one-time thing. It's a big event. I had to swap shifts with someone to do that. Um, that's because it's a big event with you know cat prices. It's gonna be on the like raw stream. It's gonna be a big, big deal with a bunch of hype built around it. It's being advertised on the the switches news page. So that actually is a big deal. Uh, so that like I, I'm I'm willing to like go out a way to make time for. But like if it was just like, uh, like the same sixteen people, but like. For skin codes with no stream i'd be like i i would i would be less incentivized to try as hard to make time like if it happened to fall on a day off oh yeah sure i'd do it but like even then it would be so like the person that's i i got to swap shifts with me anyways um was a friend of mine and he knows how much i like this game because i talk about it all the time and so he knew that this would be a big deal for me, which is why he agreed to it. Because he gave up his Saturday. He's working my Saturday shift. So. Jeez. That is, yes, exactly. So he's doing me a huge favor. He didn't have to do it. I'm So, like, I'm working his Friday shift. And he's taking my Saturday. So, like, there's more stuff going on on Saturday. So, like, it would, it would. But. He's a good friend, and he knows that I really want to do this, so he did me a favor. So I definitely owe him one. That's super cool, though. How he would, yeah. like, that's a really good friend. Yeah, right? Right? Like, uh, hi, Alan, big time. He is definitely a good friend. So, yeah. Um, you know, I guess, I, uh, I don't know if I really have much else to try to know unless there's all kinds of questions. I actually have not been checking the Discord, so I don't know if anyone's asking any questions. No, it's not. There's no. Um. Well, yeah, uh, this, this was a lot of fun. Thank you for agreeing to do this. Yes. I always, yeah, it was fun. I always love streaming and, you know, editing and stuff like that. So, yeah, and it was a cool cool way to get the community to, you know, like, just shoot some questions, basically. So Yeah, it was. it's fun. I like it. I like uh, getting these conversations going. It's been a lot of fun talking to you. We should probably Thanks. talk more. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I guess I, I actually, it's probably a good time to stop, too, just because I have some other things that I need to do. Um, but, yeah. So, thanks for having me on your podcast. <laughs> You're welcome. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Thanks.